Beirut, Lebanon awoke to scenes of utter devastation this morning after two colossal explosions devastated parts of this country's capital. They happened at a warehouse where nearly 3,000 tons of highly explosive ammonium nitrate were being stored apparently without any safety measures. At least 100 people were killed, some 4,000 injured, that according to the Red Cross. We're getting these live images right now from Beirut, where smoke continues to billow over the blast site. The explosions shattered windows as far as 20 kilometers away. Rescue workers are continuing to look for survivors beneath the rubble there. It is unclear how many people are missing at this hour. Well, A devastating blast, followed by billows of smoke, visible from all across the city. The massive explosion rocked Beirut on Tuesday evening, flattening the city's port area, with buildings destroyed and people trapped under the rubble. Ambulances raced to and from the area, transporting the injured to hospitals. We were at home. We heard what sounded like fireworks. We thought it was a container in the port that was on fire and they weren't able to put it out. A few seconds later, we were flying through the air. We heard the first explosion. We went to see what happened. I didn't have time. I didn't realize there would be a second explosion. The glass exploded in front of me. The blast destroyed buildings not only at the port where it originated, but across much of Beirut, even kilometers away from the epicenter. Shop windows were smashed, walls and doors of people's homes knocked down. The prime minister said those responsible will be brought to justice. It will not pass without accountability. Those responsible for this catastrophe will pay the price. This is a promise to the martyrs and the injured. This is a national commitment. The blast hit a country already struggling with the coronavirus pandemic and a deep economic crisis. Hospitals already burdened with COVID-19 patients are overwhelmed. Countries, including longtime rival Israel, have offered humanitarian aid to Lebanon. Support is sorely needed to help the country deal with this enormous catastrophe. We're joined now by our correspondent, Razan Salman, in Beirut. A very difficult morning where you are, Razan. Can you describe for us your experience of what happened last night? Uh, indeed, Brian, uh, this was really a catastrophe. When the explosion took place, I was at my own house. My house is like at least 10 kilometers away from the location of the explosion. All the glass in my, all the fronts in my house were all, they all exploded. I have no fronts in my house anymore. Uh, I thought the explosion was right under my building. And then when I went to the location of uh, the explosion, when I was on the way, I saw the, uh, the ambulances, they were picking casualties from uh, areas that, were, that are very far from the location of, uh, uh, of uh, the explosion. The smoke uh, was all around Beirut. You could see the smoke from any area you are in Beirut. Uh, uh, there was a total uh, state of chaos and panic. People were panicking. Uh, at first, nobody knew what happened. And then when the news started coming, people understood but uh, uh, it was because they, but their homes were already destroyed, even if they were very far from the place of the explosion. Uh, the glass was covering most of Beirut streets. The storefronts in all of downtown Beirut are all now on the streets. Uh, and this comes at a very hard time for Lebanon, where Lebanon is already suffering from a diff very difficult uh, uh, economic crisis. And also when I was on the way, People were asking if they could put if they could put uh, casualties in my own car, but luckily there were many ambulances that were already picking people. And this morning, hospitals are uh, are packed. There are at least 78 dead or 100 dead, according to uh, the uh, the Red Cross, and at least 4,000 injured uh, injured people. Uh, so uh, the, the, there is no more space in the hospital uh, to uh, welcome uh, the people who are injured. Uh, and yeah. 
Roz, on a very, a very difficult uh, situation you're describing there, we've been seeing scenes of mountains of rubble uh, around the blast site and, and farther away as well. Is there any idea how many people are trapped right now beneath the rubble that need help, that need rescuers to get to them? We have no idea how many people uh, need help under the rubble. Uh, the rescuers are still digging under the rubble, and there are helicopters that are uh, searching for people who were uh, thrown away to the sea because of the massive blast, the massive explosion. Uh, so rescuers are still working. They're still looking for people. I am in an area that is very near to one of the most uh, re uh, renowned hospitals in Beirut. Uh, uh, the ambulances were coming in and out. Uh, and uh, there was a total uh, state of panic and chaos till now uh, because we cannot even, uh, they cannot even uh, account the number of injured or there are already, there are also people who are still lost and there is, nobody knows what happened to them. They are lo still looking for people who are lost. Uh, d does Beirut, does, does Lebanon have the capacity to get to all of these people and to treat them medically? Uh, well, uh, uh, Lebanon, I do, after all the coronavirus uh, outbreak and Lebanon was already in state of panic because of this pandemic, and then the explosion came out, it came out at a very bad time. So uh, rescuers and uh, the hospitals, they announced, and the Minister of Health, he announced that the hospitals have no more capacity uh, to, uh, to uh, welcome uh, the patients, the injured people, and uh, they are treating the, 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 the injured people in the corridors of the hospitals since rooms are already packed. Razan, we have... And we, the we have... outside Beirut... A time for one more question, Razan. Um, why was this ammonium nitrate stored so close to the city center, so much of it, 3,000 tons uh, right there in the port area. And who is responsible for that? Do you have any idea? Uh, there is uh, the, the prime minister, when in his statement, he said he would not preempt any, uh, uh, any assumption uh, because, uh, and they will investigate to see who is responsible for this. Uh, the the, uh, the the tons the thir the three uh, the almost 2,750 tons of uh, ammonium nitrate were there since 2014, and they were stored without measures, according to the president of Lebanon, uh, Michel Aoun, in a statement he said yesterday uh, during the meeting of the High uh, uh, Mid uh, High Council of uh, Defense. Razan Salman in Beirut. We'll have much more uh, from the Lebanese capital as the day progresses, of course. Thanks very much for now, Razan, and all the best to you there in Beirut. Let's get more now with Joachim Paul. He heads the Beirut branch of the Heinrich Boll Foundation. That is a, a German think tank. Thanks so much for joining us today. A very difficult time. Are you, your colleagues, their families, okay? Yes, thank you. A very difficult time indeed, but we're okay. Our department and office is destroyed, but we're okay. Who is not okay are all those people out there who suffered injuries, those thousands, and the Lebanese people who had to endure for months and months uh, such a hardship and crisis. From the, the COVID pandemic you're referring to there, I imagine, um, uh, Joachim, these, these explosions, um, it come as Beirut, Lebanon is in the midst of a social and, and political crisis, a number of crises. Uh, what needs to happen right now to get the country and its people through this shock? Um, yes, they, uh, Lebanon is in not one crisis. It's in the midst of multiple crises. You mentioned the corona crisis. Corona came after... Um, uh, millions of Lebanese protested against uh, the government, not only the government, against the complete political system, which is uh, totally corrupt and uh, which is not ready um, uh, to start any reform and to open up the system, which is exactly the problem. Then the financial crisis hit, 50% of assets uh, the country were destroyed the uh, a massive amount of people were pushed under the po poverty line. Then came Corona, the month long, several months long lockdown. Now a surge in numbers of Corona infection. And then this, this if, incredible, sorry, go, yes, please. Uh, yeah, if, if the current elite, uh, the uh, business and political elite is, is incapable 
of dealing with the corona crisis and now this crisis. Um, who can help the country move forward? The demands of the, of the democracy movement were from the start, from the 17th of October, to, for the government to step down and to, to allow a government of, uh, of experts, of independents, who, are not, who do not belong or do not represent uh, the traditional political elite or political parties, to take over with a limited mandate, um, the mandate to steer the country through the economic crisis. And this did not happen. There, uh, the now government negotiated with the International Monetary Fund, Fund and other international donors, um, knowing that international aid and international financial support is the only way out of the acute massive crisis the country is in. Nothing there, happened. Yeah, there, it is an, an acute uh, crisis. Um, and, and right now there's a new one. We're looking at the port, Lebanon's imports. You, uh, millions of Lebanese depend on food, for example, passing through uh, that port. Um, do we still have the connection? It looks like. We're, we're going to wait for a second. Hello? Okay, we, we have the connection can back. I'm, go I'm going, yes, we can hear you again. Thanks so much, are you welcome. I'm going to restate uh, the question. This port is essential to get goods to the people, of not only of the capital, but the rest of Lebanon. Um, what needs to happen right now for the port itself so that it can get up and functioning, so that supplies can get to the people of Lebanon? Uh, exactly. They need to be um, uh, immediate, uh, probably humanitarian operations uh, to get the port running again. We should not forget the country depends to 85% of all the goods, uh, whatever it is being consumed, including the food supplies, medicine, etc., 85% imports. Now, the money didn't have the money, the country didn't have the money uh, to import. There's already a severe uh, nutrition crisis. Um, and this is, I would say, this and uh, medical uh, medical supplies, the most urgent to come in, um, uh, in, in, in but including uh, other things. Uh, you know, all windows in, in Beirut are scattered and destroyed. There is not one factory that produces glass in the country, for example. All of this need to be channeled through the now destroyed port. Okay, a huge task. A, a huge task for the nation to rebuild, uh, certainly after this. I'm sure the, the focus is right now on rescuing people uh, beneath the rubble. We're going to have to leave it there. You're welcome, Paul, from the Heinrich Boll Foundation. Thank you so very much, and all the best to you in you. Beirut.